Hey guys, it's I Go By Sai. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today what I wanted to talk about was anamorphic lenses. And right now I'm using an anamorphic lens to shoot this interview. The, the cool thing about anamorphics is that they do a little different thing than what spherical lenses do. If you don't already know, anamorphic is taking an image and it's squeezing and compressing it down into a more of like a one by one type ratio and or like four by three and then what you're doing is in post you're stretching it out so that's why you'll see where the heck is my flashlight I just kicked over that beer bottle and it volcanoed out and got beer all over my carpet. So I'm going to take some carpet cleaner in a little bit, but just use the, some paper towel for now. But anyways, what I want to get was this and this, that's an anamorphic flare. Okay. Typically what you do if you want that and you're using spherical lenses and spherical and normal lenses, like the, norm, the lenses you typically get for like your camera or whatever, like your DSLRs, they won't produce the same thing. They'll just like plume out. They'll just be like a spherical type um, uh, out of focus light, like bo bokeh. In this case, we're getting a horizontal line. And then like when you see like the Spielberg movies, that's the type of effect that you're getting. The thing is that anamorphics are gonna make this more movie style. So that's why you, have, you see the, the black bar above me. See that, boop, black bar up there, black bar down there, okay? That's gonna give you that real movie look opposed to spherical where you basically shoot it in the 16-9 ratio or just a regular television screen ratio. And then you just add the black bars on the top and the bottom. And it gives you that look, but lens wise of what's happening in the background, it doesn't. If you see behind me, and we'll do a super zoom. Oh yeah. Okay. You see the bokeh? It's like, it's kind of like, uh, like ovals. That's what it looks like. It's, it's like ovaled out. Um, that's the other characteristic of anamorphics when looking at an image is that things will be like stretched out and that's because of how the anamorphic reacts with light um you're fundamentally changing the way that it enters so some of the the big movies that are super classics that you've seen growing up as a filmmaker are pulp fiction and i will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brother. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Blade Runner, like 1982 Blade Runner. original Alien movie was also filmed on anamorphics. So when you start thinking about like a movie look, anamorphics are like something that we're all very familiar with and we see on screen a lot. So if you if you're trying to make your stuff look like a bu big budget movie, that's what you want to think about. Maybe we want to invest in these. And, but that's the big problem is that anamorphic is usually far out of uh, indie filmmakers budget. So this is why I'm using a DIY option. Um, what I did to this lens, this is a Schneider Cinelux two times anamorphic projector lens 
and then it's put in front of a Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.4 Otis lens. And then I have the FN lens module on the front. I'll, sh I'll show you some video of it so you can know what it is. So you're making these, these three different pieces come together. And then what's happening is the FM lens on the front is a diopter, which you can get all sorts of different types of diopters. Actually, I learned all this stuff from um, Tito. He, he's uh, from California. He does a lot of DIY stuff. I'll put his YouTube below. He knows a lot more about anamorphic setups than me. Um, so you should really check that out. Um, but you really like what, what you want to do is find the easiest solution for you. I picked the FM. I know it's big and bulky, but a lot of the times I get close to my subjects and out of all the diopters it had the close focus and you get great results. And it's close to like more of like if the Sigma and the Cinelux and the FM, you're looking at close to $1,800 or so, depending on what you get on eBay. But comparatively to a brand new lens, which will like the, the Atlas Orion's, which will cost you closer to like, well, they, I think it's uh, almost 10,000 per lens. So it's like a $30,000 set of three lenses. And that's very expensive. You're not necessarily gonna have the money for that. So this is my DIY approach. And the cool thing about the DIY option is that you can put um, like vintage lenses in the back, like 50 millimeter vintage lenses. You can put um, 80 millimeters so you can make it even a longer lens if you want. So there's a lot more options, but you just got to realize that when you're shooting, you just got to pick one lens and just go with it. And that's why I think the 55 is probably the best option. And it actually can't go any lower than about 50 because you'll start seeing vignetting around the corners and it doesn't look so nice. So um, that's the other disadvantage of a DIY option. Um, getting super wide with it is really tough. And after using that 32 millimeter Orion on that B set, I mean, I would love to have that lens, but $10,000 not really happening for me right now. So I use the Atlas Orions for um, a music video I did with Big Sean and um, they were actually really good. You know, um, the benefit of having a kit like that opposed to having a DIY option is um, being able to just pull them in and pull them out. And um, they have a lot more flexibility and I'll, I'll, and I'll go over that in more details, but you know, DIY has its place and then also the professional lenses have their places as well. So the next video that I'm gonna talk about is actually how the Atlas Orions work and what they were like on set. So stay tuned for that video. And if you liked, or you wanna make any types of comment about this video, have any questions, just, put them down below and subscribe to my channel.